Thank you, Stu, for that uh, gra gracious uh, introduction. So uh, I guess I'm the last speaker today, so I try to be as perky and as uh, uplifting as possible. I'm, I'm a public school teacher, so this is something that I have to kind of do for a living. So I'll try to be as uh, brief and as uh, perky as uh, possible. So I'm talking today about religion and politics. And I'm already looking out into this audience, and some of you guys are like, for real? Seriously? I didn't come here for that. Those are the two things that you just don't talk about in, uh, in good company or at the dinner table. But the, the fact of the matter is that these two things, religion and politics, are really uh, the fundamental way in which throughout human history, we as human beings have come to identify the world around us, view the world around us, and understand the peoples around us and ourselves, indeed ourselves. So religion and politics may be something that you don't talk about at the kitchen table or around good company, but uh, it is fundamentally important to understand that our societies are shaped in extremely, extremely big and influential ways by these two things. So this doesn't really matter, but my politics, I'll just go ahead and just throw them out there real quick. I are, are progressive. I believe in, a, uh, in raising the minimum wage. I believe in uh, upholding and protecting the uh, rights of the uh, LGBTQIA plus community to marry. I believe that a Planned Parenthood is a good thing and we need to uh, promote a funding for uh, Planned Parenthood as a great uh, health resource in our communities. I believe in a single payer healthcare system and universal health care. And on the same token, uh, my religion, I'm a, I'm a committed Christian. I believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe uh, that uh, the, the God of Abraham revealed himself to Abraham in, uh, in the deserts out there somewhere in Mesopotamia. I believe that Jesus saves. So that really uh, oftentimes uh, becomes a, a, sort, a, a reason for conflict. How can you reconcile these two things? Because I also understand that religion has, throughout the entire course of the human narrative, the, core, the entire scope of human history, been used to marginalize communities. Uh, it's, been used to op it's been used to oppress entire categories of peoples. Religion has been used to divide communities. And yes, uh, to, uh, to instill all kinds of acts of violence and war itself. Uh, those of you who study history will understand that some of the most uh, uh, brutal, of, brutal of wars were fought along religious lines, whether you look at the wars of the Reformation in Europe or even what's going on in the Middle East today, uh, a war that I served in. You know, I remember just how important religion was in, in that conflict, in the, the war in Iraq. So that begets the question, and it's an important question to ask ourselves as a, as a global humanity, as a global mankind, how can you be somebody who espouses progressivism? Because those things I just mentioned, all right, war, marginalization, oppression, so on and so forth, are not progressive values. How can you be and identify yourself as a progressive and be a good Jew? How can you identify yourself as a progressive and be a good Hindu or a Buddhist? How can you identify yourself as a progressive and be a committed Christian? How can you identify yourself as a progressive and be a Muslim? How can that be? And uh, again, this is a question that you need encyclopedias to really answer this question. But the argument that I want to make uh, today, here today, uh, to you all, and my real idea that I just want to promote is that uh, in many regards, progressivism, modern progressivism and uh, religion are not in two separate spheres. They don't exist in two separate categories. And indeed, there are uh, significant ways in which these two uh, arenas actually do overlap. And uh, there's a multitude of different ways of approaching this. And uh, again, as a history teacher, I teach high school history. So uh, let's look at some of, the, some of the, the key terms now, all right? Some of the buzzwords, the key terms, the definitions, all right? When you think of the modern day progressive movement, all right? Some of the buzzwords are economic justice, all right, social justice, climate justice, gender justice, racial justice. Justice is at the heart and at the soul, really, of modern progressivism. Now, if you look at the, 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 the organized face of the world, and I do want to really focus on organized religion, Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and if you uh, look at this concept, justice, it is also at the very heart and soul of each one of those faiths. The, the Judeo-Christian imagery of justice rolling down the, uh, the rocks and mountains like a, a roaring stream, like waters that are going to free people, is a very vivid one in uh, Christianity. It was actually, a, in Judeo-Christianity, I should say, that was embraced by people like Dr. Martin Luther King, Bernie Sanders. 
If you look at the uh, idea of, uh, of the word uh, 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 Adel in Arabic, this is, a, this is the name for God, and the word is translated to utter justice. It is the name of Allah himself. If you look at the first Indo-Aryan language that was written down in, in, a, in a script, in a form of, uh, of writing, and when the first uh, symbols that was actually uh, uh, made uh, vivid, really, that was written down in the ancient language of Sanskrit, it was the word ni, ni which means, what do you think? Justice. And again, we know that the Dharmic religions are huge on this concept of Nihai, justice in, in the world. So when you understand this notion now, that justice is at the core of both uh, the modern progressive movement and religion, you can start seeing that there's some important overlaps. And uh, again, I don't want to take too much time because I was told that we have to wrap this up quickly because you guys have been sitting here since uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. I want to make this argument today, this big idea. And that is that the two communities, all right, modern progressive uh, warriors out there and, and, and religious communities shouldn't be in separate spheres. And that uh, the, the two groups should find each other and work together on common causes, whether it is racial justice, whether it is uh, health care uh, rights, whether it is uh, bringing together uh, and fighting for poor people. It's a powerful thing to say to a, uh, to a Muslim that, that Allah mandates you to work and push your society to take care of the poor. It is mandated for you as a Muslim to do this. It's important to, uh, it's a powerful thing to understand that in Judaism, if you're Jewish, that Yahweh mandates you, commands you, if you're a, uh, a landowner or a landlord, that you must pay a just wage to your laborers. Or, if you have uh, foreigners at your door, that they must be welcomed in. If you have strangers at your door, whether they be migrants, whether they be immigrants, or whether they be refugees. It's a powerful thing to say to a Christian that Jesus never asked for a deductible or a copay when he healed the sickest of the sick <laughs> and raised people from the dead. Those are progressive values, those are religious values. So and when I uh, dwell upon, as in this is again the history teacher in me, when I think about the great icons of progress throughout the scope of human history, you can see that many of them, I would even argue and say most of them, were driven by religious fervor. The abolitionists who embraced uh, the story of Exodus from the Hebrew scriptures as they fought vehemently, tirelessly to eradicate slavery in this country. I think of Mahatma Gandhi who embraced the concepts of ahimsa, who embraced the concept of satyagraha, ahimsa meaning nonviolence, satyagraha meaning uh, soul force, and embracing those uh, notions and those ideas to free an entire subcontinent from imperial rule in a nonviolent manner, largely. That is an extremely amazing thing that was accomplished in human history, one of the most amazing things, I will say, to free 300 million people in a nonviolent way, a largely nonviolent uh, fashion. I think of the great icon, one of my personal heroes, Dr. King, who used his Christianity as an inspiration to fight for the civil liberties and the civil rights of this country's African-American community, and through that successful movement, was able to garner civil rights for many different uh, marginalized communities. I think of Cesar Chavez, who in this very state embraced his uh, Catholic identity and said that God is the protector of the laborers that workers' rights are divine rights, and it is up to society to make sure that they are getting paid a, a living wage, that they have equitable uh, living conditions, and that they're safe when they work. I think of modern-day heroes like Malela Yousafzai or Desmond Tutu, who again garnered their religious faith. Both of them identify themselves as being very religious, and both of them uh, embrace the notion of reconciliation uh, in, 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 in terms of moving their societies forward. Desmond Tutu was a second-class second citizen in his uh, country, South Africa, during apartheid. And we know what happened to Malala, uh, Malala Yousafzai, shot in the head by the Taliban, survived, spoke out, and said that it is, it is, a, it is a, a sin that the Taliban is saying that I cannot be participating in my own 
society, my own community, because I'm a woman. And she embraced religion and argued against another religious uh, idea that the Taliban was espousing to her own faith. So again, those are just a couple of historical examples that I want to give. But I really want to end on this one note, that if we can again, as in days past, connect the two, that the modern progressive, progressive movement and religious, organized religion are not in separate arenas. They're not in separate uh, worlds. If we can start building those divides, if we can start working together, and again, I know that there are certain things that are going to be perennial issues that may never be rectified. I understand that they will never be in uh, any sort of congruency. But there is a great degree of overlap. And if we can once again, our generation, make this happen, we can truly bring transformative, globally transformative change to this world in the right direction. Thank you again, everybody.